Hi, today we are going to learn making water effect in Maya. We will create this effect using bump map. There we will animate the water too, to have nice ripples and waves movement. So let's get started. First I'll make a NURBS plane. This plane will be used for water. I'll scale it this much. Better delete the history of the object. So we will go and edit, delete by type, history. As we know, we will create the water using bump map. Let's give it a shader material. For that I will apply a blend material to the water object. We want some shiny and reflecting water, for that blend material is ideal. For the color I will have it with a slight greenish look. You can have it blue also, or any color according to your choice, that's not a problem. Even you can have the color just white, because water doesn't have any color, and since we will have quite much transparency in our shader. And next, we will give it transparency. Because water is almost 100% transparent. I will give it transparency maybe around 60%. I will give it some more ambient. Let's scroll down to the specular shading attribute. This attribute is very important for our water effect. I will first reduce the eccentricity, so it will have very small and tiny specular. And specular roll off to maximum. Let's have a quick render, so we can see what we have got yet. Let's have an IPR render. So as you can see nothing fancy yet. Because water has waves and ripples, and currently we have not created them yet. So to get the waves and ripples, next we will create the bump map in our blend shader. For that let's go to the bump map attribute of the blend shader. Click on this checker box. We get create render node window. For the bump, I will use fractal noise, so click on fractal. As you click you can see, the ripples and waves in our water surface. Right now you can see that, the ripples are very high, I do not want this much high waves. So for that we will go in the attributes of our bump map, and reduce the bump depth value to 0.1. So how much height of the waves you want, you change it from here. Maybe 0.2. Or 0.3. So you change the value to get your desired height. Let's zoom in a little more to see them closely. So we have this for now. We have small waves and tiny speculars. To highlight the waves more, it's always good to have a light in your scene. Currently there is no light in the scene. So I will create one. Why well, will make a directional light. Now we have the directional light in our scene. Directional light is like the sunlight. It's applied to all over the scene. Let's position the directional light properly. The position of this directional light is very important for our water effect. Because water is mostly visible because of the specular and reflections. Water is completely transparent and without any color. It's the specularity and reflections which displays the water. So to show the specular of the water I will use this directional light. Let's have a render again. Now we see that we have some more specular in the water. Let's zoom it again and have a new render. Here is the render. Let's get to learn how to position the directional light for better results. You should have the direction of the light in such a manner that it should bounce on the water and come to camera. We see the specular when the light bounces on it and comes to the camera. Render again. And now we see some more specular in the water. Let's add some more adjustments in our blend shader to get some more water effect. Select the water object which has the blend applied to it. 
Let's have an IPR render to see our changes interactively. To change the speculation of the water, change the value of eccentricity, and you increase or decrease the shine on the water. I will have it to look like this. You can have your choice. Here is the specular roll off. It's the brightness of the speculation. It controls how much shine will be there in the water. I will have it 200%. And here is the specular color. Increase the whiteness to shine it more. I will have it maybe this much. Next we will come to reflectivity. Reflectivity is very important for water effect. This is the percentage of the reflectivity of the shader. It's 0.5, means it's 50%. I will leave it with this value. Then we have reflected color. I will use a texture map for this, instead of a color. So click on the checker button. And from here, choose file node. I want to apply a texture for the reflection, click on the folder button and locate the texture. Better I show you the texture image, so you can understand better. This is the texture I will use for the reflection. You can find this kind of texture on the internet. Or you can use any image which has lots of noisy black and white data. Let it open to apply this map. So now we can see that the texture is applied in the reflectivity of the blend shader. Let's come down to the reflectivity value. I will reduce it a little. I do not want so much reflection. But you can have it, according to your choice. This is good for me. Now one more important setting for our water effect. Let's go in the render settings and click on the Maya software tab. In the ray tracing quality, check the ray tracing to on. Let's have a render real quick. Here is what we have got. Let's adjust the transparency. I, I will increase the transparency to almost 80 to 90 percent. Let's render. So here, when we have more transparency, it looks like this. We are almost done with water. Let's create the environment model for the water. You can have your environment according to your projects, doesn't matter. This is our water surface. For the simple environment, I will have one new NURB surface. Scale it up to this much. We will show it like the ground, around the water. So to have some details, I will increase the divisions in U and V. Move it a little down from the water surface. This is our water surface, and this is our ground object. Now I will have some more details in the plane, to give it look of the ground. Let's select the object and go in the polygon menu set. In the mesh menu, we have sculpt geometry too. Click on the options box. So we will get the tool settings here. I will pull it like this. The value is quite high, so I will reduce it. I will make the ground higher at the banks of the water. Just for the modeling purpose I will reduce the transparency of our water shader. I will get it back when we are done modeling the ground. Now we have this ground model. Again I will take the Sculpt Geometry tool and add some more details. So now our environment model is ready. I want to show it like a ground. So for that I will apply a Lambert on it. 
and in the color attribute, click on the checker button. I will apply a texture of the ground. You can use your own textures according to your project requirements. To see the texture, click on the Show Texture button. So we have got our ground ready. Let's render our scene again. Currently we have this look of our water. So first as I mentioned before, I will get back the transparency of the water shader. For that select the plane, and in the blend shader get your transparency back. Let's get a quick render. So we have got this. The water and the ground. Right now we are having some issues in the lighting. As I mentioned before, the position of the light is very important for water effect. I will again change the light's position so it bounces on the water and comes to the camera. Or let's have this view in our scene. This view looks better. We can scale our plane. It should not cause any issue. Again change the light direction, so it should bounce on the water and comes to the camera. Let's render and see what we have got. Maybe I will have some more transparency. Let's get a new render. So we can see the shiny specular and the reflections in the water. Let's fix the lighting some more and we are done. First I will select our existing directional light. I want to use this light only for specular and not for diffuse. So for that, I will go in the attributes and check off the emit diffuse. And for the diffuse light, I will use ambient light. Move it little up. Let's render. We can see that the area is illuminated better. The intensity of the light looks quite much. So I will reduce it to maybe 0.6. And let's see. So here is our water ready. Next we will come to the animation part. Currently this water is static. You are good to go if you need a single image only. But if you are going to show it an animation, you need motion in the ripples in waves. So let's start making movements in the ripples in waves. As we know, that the ripples in waves are created using bump map. And for the bump we used fractal noise. So whatever you change in the fractal node, it directly affects the ripples. Currently the fractal is static, so are the waves. So to move the fractal noise, let's go in the attribute editor of the fractal. There you can see we have one attribute named, animated. So let's first, check it on. Now we could have movement in the waves. After checking it on, we need to keyframe its time attribute. For that I'll have maybe 100 frames. Click on the first frame. And in the time attribute, right click and say, set key. So when key is created on frame 1. Next come to frame 100, and I will give value point 1. Here in the thumbnail of the fractal, you can see that, when I change the value, the pattern also gets changed. If I change it to point 2, you can see there is a change in the pattern of the waves. I will get back to point 1. Let's render. To show you the difference I will have two renders on different frames, so can see the change in the waves. For that, I will keep this image, and go to some frames ahead. I will go some frames ahead, and render again. Now if I show you both images, you can see, 
that there is a movement in the waves, in both images. So when you will render your whole sequence, you will find that there is a very nice movement in the waves. This animation was for the waves at the same place. We can move the waves also, in a particular direction. We can move the waves from this direction to that direction or vice versa. So to get the next movement in the waves, I will again select our water plane, and kill the transparency. Temporarily, only to set up our waves motion. Currently we just have the solid color in the plane. It's not possible to see any motion in a solid color. So to see the changes, I will apply our fractal as a texture for the plane. So let's go in the hyper shade. Please pay attention, because this step is a little tricky. This is the blin, which has the fractal bump. Select it, and click on this inputs button. Then you will get all the inputs nodes of the fractal, in your hyper shade work area. This is our reflection texture. This one is our fractal, which is giving the bump to our shader. I want to connect this fractal, to the color attribute of our shader, so it will have the fractal as texture. To connect them, middle mouse click on the fractal, drag, and leave on the blend shader. Then you get the list of attributes, click on color. Now you can see that the fractal is applied as a texture on the plane. Now we can see the movement of the texture on our plane. Select the placement node of your fractal. We will move the texture using the Place Texture node. To show you what happening, I take the pointer over the Translate value, press Ctrl on keyboard, and press middle mouse button and move the mouse left or right, to increase or decrease the value. You can see the water is flowing to a particular direction. As you know that this fractal texture, is applied to the bump of the water. So when we are moving the fractal noise, means we are moving the bump of the water, means the waves. And you can flow it to any direction. You need to just play with this node. Now, let's keyframe the values to animate them. Maybe I will animate it to this direction. Go on to the first frame. Right click on the value. Set key. Next move to frame 100, and value may be minus 0.05. This is it. Now our scene is ready to be rendered. One more important thing. When you are making this water effect, make sure that you have linear keyframes for your animation. For that you just double click on the time slider, it will select all the keys in the area. Right click, go to tangents, and click on linear. Same thing we will do in our fractal node. Click on select button here. Double click. Tangent, linear. Since we are done. Let's get back to the color attribute of our blin. Let's open the hyper shade. If you take your pointer over these lines, it will show the names of the connected attributes. This is the color connection, just select this, and delete. Now we can have our water color again. Get your transparency back also. Here is what we have got. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe.